आप पता है हम सबको के न्यूरो मॉड्यूल हमारा चल रहा है तो लास्ट फ्राइडे डॉक्टर ताहा प्रेजेंटेड अबाउट सेरिबल फिजियोलॉजी एंड शी एलेबोरेटेड वेरी वेल टुडे वी विल डिस्कस इंट्राक्रेनियल प्रेशर एंड वी विल सी व्हाट इज मोनरो कैलरी डॉक्ट्राइन what is cerebral circulation including arterial blood supply and uh, venous drainage uh, the next would be icp waveform its component uh, the third fourth thing is uh, reasons for raised icp uh, how to monitor icp uh, what gadgets we we have nowadays uh, including invasive and non invasive uh, then how to manage icp okay so monroe kelly doctrine uh, is very well known uh, monroe in around 1780s uh, he introduced the concept of icp and later on one of his student kelly elaborated further and uh, they formulated this concept which we today know as a known know as a monroe kelly doctrine what it says like so our skull is uncompressible structure which contain three main components that one is the brain parenchyma uh, cerebral blood volume uh, both in arterial and venous and the third thing is the csf in the ventricular system so cerebral uh, hemispheres make around 80% of the total brain volume uh, csf around contribute around 10 to 15% and the cerebral blood contribute around 5%. So it says that the sum of all the components remain constant. If any component goes up, the other has to go down. So anyone, uh, any system uh, expands, the other system comes down. So let's start with one, uh, one by one, every component, cerebral blood supply. So arterial supply so let's start from the heart on the left side the left common carotid artery arises directly from the aortic arch and on the right side it arises from the brachiocephalic trunk so it's the main difference if someone asked in the uh, why why like like where's the blood supply of the uh, brain and uh, from where these arteries originate so left com uh, common carotid artery originate directly from the aortic arch and right from a uh, common carotid artery rises from the brachiocephalic trunk. These common carotid artery is divided into internal and external carotid arteries. Internal carotid artery further divided into anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery that form the part of anterior circulation, anterior part of the circle of villus. On the other side, uh, the vertebral artery rises from the subclavian arteries which join from the, uh, with the other uh, side of the artery and make the basilar artery which ultimately divided into posterior cerebral artery and make the posterior part of the uh, circle of villus. So, so how it looks like inside the brain. So when we see this is the internal carotid artery coming uh, entering uh, through the base of the skull, dividing into the anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery. These anterior cerebral arteries are connected with the anterior communicating arteries. Likewise, the posterior uh, vertebral arteries join to form the uh, basilar artery, which divides into the posterior cerebral artery. Posterior cerebral artery are connected with the anterior circulation through the posterior communi communicating arteries. So, this is how it makes the circle of villus and it supplies the whole brain. So this is the more elaborated form, but the same things again, vertebral artery uh, joined to form the basilar artery, which divides into posterior cerebral arteries. Similarly, internal carotid arteries divide into interior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery, which are connected with the anterior communicating artery. So this is how they make the circle of villus and it supplies the whole brain. This is the <laughs> arterial component of the uh, blood wall. So venous component of the uh, cerebral blood volume so it starts from the superior sagittal sinus, occipital sinus, inferior sagittal sinus. This all these three, all three sinuses uh, meet up at the confluence of the sinuses, from where it drains into the transfer sinuses, and through this, from the transfer sinuses via sigmoid sinus, they drain into internal jugular vein. From the exam point of view, you need to know the venous drainage. This is very basic. 
So you need to know this uh, venous drainage of the brain as well. So again, excuse me, inferior sagittal sinus, superior sagittal sinus, occipital, all meet up at confluence of the sinus, through the, uh, from the confluence of sinus into the transfer sinus and sigmoid and internal jugular vein. And from the cavernous sinus, through the superior and inferior petrosal sinus into the sigmoid sinus on the both sides. So it, if, we, if we say that uh, what's the role of venous drainage into the ICP, if there is any blockage in the venous drainage that ultimately lead to raised ICP. Likewise, if there is any problem in autoregulation of the cerebral circulation or circle of villus or whole arterial supply, like uh, normal uh, or active autoregulation can lead to arterial hyper hyperemia that can lead to a raised ICP or this uh, uh, dysregulated autoregulation. These both component can lead to uh, raised ICP. Similarly, any obstruction in the venous drainage can lead to raised ICP. Okay, so this is the diagrammatical representation of uh, venous system. Again, uh, sorry, superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus connected through the Fox cerebri and then occipital sinus. So three sinuses, inferior, superior and occipital sinus meet up at the confluence of the sinus. Then they trans uh, travel along the a transverse sinus and through the sigmoid into the internal jugular vein. Meanwhile, cavernous sinus through superior petrosal and inferior petrosal sinuses into the sigmoid and then into the internal jugular vein. So these are the, this, this is the venous drainage of the brain. Any blockage at any part, either internally or externally. Externally can be uh, superior vena cava syndrome or any uh, raised intrathoracic pressure can lead to venous obstruction, ultimately lead to raised ICP. Okay, what is the role of CSF in ICP? CSF and uh, ventricular system. We all know where uh, ventricular system, lateral ventricle, third ventricle and fourth ventricle. Choroid plexus in the secretes CSF that travels through the foramen mountain to the third ventricle and through the cerebral aqueduct into the fourth ventricle. From fourth ventricle, uh, through foramen magenti and lushka into the uh, subarachnoid space, from the subarachnoid space into through the arachnoid villus into the dural sinuses and ultimately into the internal jugular vein. So any obstruction at the level of fourth ventricular or intraventricular tumor or at the level of cerebral aqueduct or at the level of uh, cerebellum, at the cerebellum can lead to obstructive hydrocephalus that can lead to uh, swelling of the ventricles that ultimately uh, results into raised ICP. So around 80% of the CSF produced by this choroid plexus and 20% uh, through the movement of a uh, fluid uh, across the blood brain barrier. Okay, so this is a very important slide. There are two barriers uh, which separates the brain care parenchyma uh, to uh, the blood or CSF. The one is the blood brain barrier and the other one is the blood CSF barrier which separates parenchyma to the blood or CSF. Okay. So what is the composition of blood brain barrier? Very important. So blood brain barrier, blood, we know blood is confined into the vessels. Vessels are made of endothelial cells. Uh, endothelial cells uh, that are lined with the basal lamina. This is the basic composition of or uh, basic anatomy of the uh, cerebral capillary. These capillaries are further surrounded by the pericytes. These pericytes, we can call it a muscles if it is an arterioles. These are the, these, these, these uh, structure pericytes or muscular cells have the function of uh, contraction or relaxation. So these are the cells which can either relax or constrict the vessels. So the outer layer is made by the uh, astrocyte and feet, which covers uh, the capillaries. And uh, these pericytes and uh, astrocytes are further innervated by the nerves. So these uh, three or four structures, endothelial cells, basal lamina, pericytes, and astrocytes. These four structures are the functional unit of the 
blood brain barrier okay i'll repeat it uh endothelial cell parasites uh, basal lamina parasites and astrocyte and plate these are the four component of blood brain barrier i'll not discuss how the uh, water and other molecules move these uh, structures but at at this your uh, your stage uh, you just need to uh, mention four structures and when you will talk about blood csf barrier so again uh, choroid plexus are formed by uh, capillaries and uh, epithelial cells these epithelial cells are a kind of uh, are a kind of secretory cells uh, with kind of secretory cells and uh, on the vascular end there is a comp uh, endothelial cell and basal lamina that's it so three structures uh, secretory cell endothelial and basal lamina so these two barriers are very important blood brain barrier and blood csf barrier okay brain parenchyma we all know about brain parenchyma cerebrum cerebellum and brain stem any structure <laughs> or any space occupying lien within the brain cere supratentorial or infratentorial can lead to raised icp so these these are the three components blood blood volume csf and brain parenchyma any disturbance in any part of these three structures uh, can result into i raised icp okay so the next uh, is the icp waveform the examiner might task you in exam what draw i waveform so it has three components p1 p2 and p3 so uh waves uh or uh, you can call it a percussion wave that represents the arterial supply or arterial pulsation within the brain so it's the arterial component of the icp the आवाज आ रही है जी सर अब आवाज आ रही है थोड़ा डिस्कनेक्शन था शायद आप ही तरफ अच्छा सॉरी सॉरी अह अपॉलॉजीज अह इंट्राक्रेनियल प्रेशर वेव फॉर्म वी आर डिस्कसिंग इंट्राक्रेनियल प्रेशर फॉर्म सो देयर आर थ्री कंपोनेंट्स P1 P2 एंड P3 P1 रिप्रेजेंट्स द परकशन वेव दैट इज द आर्टेरियल कंपोनेंट और आर्टेरियल पल्सेशन the second one is the tidal component that represents the compliance of the brain or elasticity of the brain and the third one is the diacrotic wave that is the venous component of uh, the wave or you can call it uh, uh the venous vein or venous vein or it's it's due to the diacrotic it's it's like actually coincides with the diacrotic nodes or uh, closure of the aortic valve so p2 is very important that is tidal wave that show the elasticity or percussion wave if p2 goes above one it it means that there's something wrong even within the brain 
and patient is having raised ICP. So this is the normal wave, P1, P2, and P3. If P2 goes above P1, it means the patient is having uh, uh, decreased compliance or raised ICP. So this is the normal physiology. If the ICP raise, what happened physiologically within the brain? Let's start with the first phase. If ICP rises, the first thing will happen, the IC, uh, CSF relocation, like CSF move towards the spinal component. So it, it decreases the uh, CSF volume, which in turn lead to decreased ICP. It's the phase one. The next thing, if the ICP increases, the cerebral perfusion pressure decreases. We all know cerebral perfusion pressure is equal to mean arterial pressure minus ICP. So ICP increases, cerebral perfusion pressure decreases. The cerebral perfusion pressure, decrease in cerebral perfusion pressure lead to decrease in cerebral blood volume that ultimately lead to decrease in ICP. And the third phase, when ICP increases, cerebral perfusion pressure decreases, it means cerebral blood flow decreases. So cerebral blood flow, when there is a decrease in cerebral blood flow, there is, which activates the cerebral autoregulation, which decreases the cerebral resistance and increases the cerebral blood volume. I hope you understand it. So let's again start. ICP increases, CSF moves down towards the spinal cord which in turn decreases the cerebral uh, CSF volume and ICP. The next step is in ICP on the other side, ICP increases, cerebral perfusion pressure decreases, cerebral blood flow decreases, which in activate the cerebral uh, autoregulation. What it do, what it'll do, uh, it decreases the cerebral resistance and increases the cerebral blood flow and cerebral blood volume. Okay. So this is the same uh, presentation. Uh, Cerebral compliance or pressure volume curve. Compliance is equal to change in volume over change in pressure. Again, at the normal stage, we have three components, blood volume, CSF, and brain. If anything happen, uh, happens within the brain in terms of mass, the first thing is the relocation of the venous and CSF. So there won't be any uh, increase in ICP. That is compensated normal ICP. If the mass in expands further and there is no uh, room for uh, relocation of the CSF or blood volume, then there would be exponentially increasing ICP. They, they, in, in exam, they can ask about this curve. This curve is very important. Pressure volume curve. Herniation syndrome. Uh, last uh, week, I think Dr. Kaha explained about this. Uh, when the ICP uh, raises intracompartmental gradient uh, leads to parenchymal tissue shift from one place to another. There are four or five types of uh, uh, these uh, relocations in terms of uh, cingulate, transtentorial, uncle, uh, or tonsillar. Causes of raised ICP. So we know uh, three components and their disorder can lead to disorder of the cerebral circulation, brain edema or masses, uh, CSF obstruction, and idiopathy. These are the four types, uh, uh, main categories uh, which can cause raised ICP. First of all, uh, let's discuss with the blood volume. So increase in blood volume, it, it can be, so let's start with, this is a busy slide, but it's very important. Cerebral arterial hypervolemia. This is arterial component only. That can either be due to uh, autoregulated active vasodilation or this uh, or this regulated passive arterial vasodilation. Okay, autoregulated in which in patients with intact autoregulation, it can either be due to neural activation, like in uh, during. Seizure, agitation, delirium, dysautonomia, fever, rapid eye movement, sleep. These are all neural, neural activation can lead to arterial hypervolemia or the uh, metabolic component like hypercapnia, hypoglycemia, hypoxemia, anemia. These are the metabolic component that can uh, do the autoregulated active vasodilation that in terms in return lead to uh, raised ICP. 
and uh, this regulated arterial vasodilation when there is injury to the blood brain barrier like in liver failure in tumors infection etc etc post carotid and artery this can all lead to dysregulated passive arterial vasodilatation this is the arterial component okay from the venous point of view venous sinus obstruction uh, we have heard about cavernous sinus thrombosis superior sagittal venous thrombosis it can be lead, can be from uh, extrinsic compression thrombosis or pseudo tumor cerebri or from the high extracranial venous pressure like high intrathoracic pressure superior vena cava syndrome right heart failure digital jugular compression or trendable uh, trend lemberg position so these are the main causes from blood volume increase in blood volume so arterial component venous component or extracranial component okay masses and edema with a uh, brain edema can either be vasogenic or cytotoxic there are multiple reasons for that or masses like intracranial neoplasm or hemorrhage increase csf volume either it can be communicated or non communicated okay how to diagnose it raised icp clinically if the patient is awake they may complain about headache uh, nausea vomiting pupillary changes or altered mental status if the patient is awake if the patient is on ventilator the only thing we can assess is the pupillary changes if the patient is sedated and ventilated uh, relaxed the only sign we can uh, check is the pupillary changes from which we can get an idea whether the patient is having uh, raised icp or not cushing triate uh, it's a combination of hypertension bradycardia and irregular respiration or apnea this clinical uh, cushing triad like it's very difficult to uh, to see these three signs in a single patient so it's difficult to uh, get all three things in one patient okay uh, what are the guidelines uh, or you can say the indications for icp monitoring this is uh, there is no level 1 or level 2 okay. indication for icp monitoring so icp should be monitored if the patient is having gcs 3 to 8 gcs 3 to 8 and the other thing is the patient is having abnormal ct in terms of hematoma contusion herniation or compressed basal cisterns so if the patient is having abnormal ct gcs below 8 start monitoring icp or the patient is having gcs below 8 but normal ct then what you need to check if the age is more than 40 unilateral or bilateral motor posturing or systolic blood pressure less than 90 if any of these two features are present on top of gcs 3 to 8 with normal ct start monitoring icp again two indication if the gcs is less than 8 with abnormal ct the second thing is gcs less than 8 with normal ct and uh, either having two features age uh, motor posturing and systolic blood pressure Uh, less than 90 so okay you put in uh, icp probe and you start monitoring when you uh, you would uh, start treating icp so if the icp uh, goes above 20 then you start treating uh, icp and when you would label it intracranial uh, hypertension or raised icp if there is a sustained uh, elevation in icp to more than 20 2 mm of mercury for more than 5 minutes then we would label it as a as a intracranial hypertension and you name it as a brain colds okay icp monitoring we have invasive monitoring and non invasive invasive wise there are uh, two uh, gold standard like one is evd or ventriculostomy this is the gold standard uh, method of monitoring icp the other one is intraparenchymal uh probe this is the fiber optic probe uh you just put in you just made a bur hole and put in a, a probe within the parenchyma and you start monitoring it there are other types of monitoring as well but these are the famous intraparenchymal probe and ventriculostomy or evg 
okay so uh, when you put in a parent chimal probe you uh, you would get this kind of number the absolute number 12 15 20 uh, icp of icp or this is the avd the manual monitoring of icp so invasive monitoring uh, is good but there are many risks and uh, not every patient would get it so the risks are uh, bleeding up to 18 percent device malposition very frequently up to nine percent and in untrained hands uh, this figure goes up or infection one uh, one percent these uh, gadgets are only available in uh, specialized uh, neurosurgical centers these are expensive so one fiber optic probe or uh, icp for icp is around more than one lakh kind of it becomes inaccurate uh, difficult to use with brain swellings contraindicated in coagulopathic or thrombocytopenic and limited use even in eligible cases because of uh, unavailability of expertise so non-invasive non-invasive physical examination uh, check the gcs uh, reflexes ct mri uh, from the city you can see uh, midline shift effacement uh, of uh, the sulci and gyri uh, compression of the basal cisterns. These are the findings you can uh, get from uh, CT MRI. Transcranial Doppler, again, uh, you need uh, expertise depending on brain displacement, EEG, NEARS. So these are all uh, which kind of little bit of expertise apart from uh, physical examination. So one new thing uh, has been introduced uh, into the system to check or to get an idea about the raised ICP uh, that is of thalamic ultrasound. You don't need expertise in that. Uh, you just need to do a certain number of cases and you would be able to uh, be enough, enough proficient to do this on your own. You just need to put a probe on the glob and uh, check the uh, optic nerve diameter. From there, you can get an idea of raised ICP. Management. So this is the emergency neuro life support uh, guidelines. These are the American guidelines. These are similar to ACLS, BLS, ATLS, APLS. So they, they, they have devised uh, the plan or they give us uh, the management plan, what to do if you see a patient of raised ICP in emergency or in ICU. So they divided the management in four tire, tire zero, tire, that is a standard measures you take in every single neurosurgical patient to avoid brain herniation. Then is a tire one measures, tire two measures, and tire three measures. So let's start with the tire one or tire zero, sorry, uh, measures. There's a standard issues to prevent brain herniation. Okay. If you see a patient in ANE or uh, in ICU, and uh, you are called that patient is having raised ICP or ICP is going above 20 or 25. So you start from A, B, C, assess the airway potency, check the ventilation, whether the patient is adequately being ventilated or not. And uh, the third thing is circulation, whether the patient is hemodynamically stable or not. If the patient is having low MAPS, certainly the patient ICP would raise. Okay. The next thing, if the patient is intubated, uh, you stop uh, or minimize uh, noxious stimuli such as tracheal suctioning that is a source of raised ICP. Then if the patient is again sedated or ventilated, uh, you increase the sedation or analgesia. Or if the patient is not intubated or a trauma patient, then he may have some other injuries. So provide analgesia for that. Uh, target normothermia, it is very important. Don't make these patients febrile and uh, treat hyperthermia aggressively. Next thing is head and neck position. Head should be 30 degree elevated and neck should be in uh, neck, head and neck in the neutral position. It shouldn't be turned in either direction. There shouldn't be any ties around the neck. So these are the precautions for head and neck positioning. So don't use uh, or avoid uh, hypotonic solution use either iso or hyper osmotic fluid if patient is having hyponatremia uh, treat it aggressively and try to keep it uh, sodium above 140 so the role of sodium is very important 
and and management of uh, head injury patient. So if we, if the patient uh, doesn't have any CT before, so go ahead or go for a non-contrast CT to just to get an idea: is there anything going wrong within the brain? And uh, at high dose corticosteroid therapy, the patient is having brain tumor, abscess, or non-infectious neuroinflammatory condition. These are the general measures you you take in every single neurosurgical patients with suspicion of raised ICP to avoid brain herniation. Okay, trial one. Trial one include hyperosmolar therapy, hyperventilation, CSF drainage, and surgery. So let's start with hyperosmolar therapy. There are two main things in hyperosmolar therapy. One is that 20% meritol. Everyone is familiar with that and everyone is using that. The other thing is 3% hypertonic cell line. So both are, literature says both are equally effective in reducing ICP. So dose of meritol, 0.5 to 1 gram per kilo, IV bolus through the peripheral line, our five to 10 minutes, five to 15 minutes. So first bullet 0.5 to one gram per kilo. You can repeat it after four to six early, but how frequently or how uh, uh, frequently you can uh, give manitol. If you're using it frequently and the patient is not responding, then you need to check the osmolar gap. What is the osmolar gap? You calculate uh, osmolality and you uh, subtract it from the measured which you sent to the library and they do it for you. And uh, the difference between measured and calculated osmolality is the osmolar gap. If the osmolar gap is more than 20 millimoles, so there won't be any difference or therapeutic benefit you would get from the manitol. So I am not going to into detail how manitol works, what are the electrolytes abnormality with manitol, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So this is, these are the basic points. Those, how frequently you can repeat and uh, how far you can go with manitol. So hypertonic saline. So it's available from two to 23.4% of the concentration. In Chokotanam only 3% is available. We don't have any 10% or above that. So only 3% available in Chokotanam. And it can be administered either alone or in combination with manitol. If you are using concentration above 7.5%, so you need CVC. What you need to do, you check sodium level after every four to six hourly and you try to keep sodium level below 160 milli equivalent. So these are two hypertonic, hyperosmolar therapies. Okay, so temporary hyperventilation. So here is the role of uh, decreasing the PCO2. There is no role of hyperventilation or keeping uh, PCO2 below 35 entire zero. So if you see the patient is having raised ICP, so you temporarily increase hyperventilation or you do the hyperventilation. It's effective only for the two hours, for two hours. Like if you keep the PACO to 30 to 35, it will be effective only two hours. Okay, it works via the vasoconstrictive effect of decreased PACO2, everyone knows. If you keep the PCO2 above, uh, below 25, then it can lead to secondary brain ischemia. And if you keep on ventilating, hyperventilating for five days, it can lead to uh, it can lead to slow recovery. So only effective for temporary uh, time. It is not for long-term management of the brain injury patient. So uh, the third is CSF. If you uh, the suspicion is of obstructive hydrocephalus, so just put in IVG and drain five to ten ml. Okay, if the above measure fails entire one, you go for surgical decompression. And if the surgery is not appropriate, you move to tire two. So at this stage, surgical surgery is indicated. If not, move to tire two. So tire two, the same things. Uh, hyper or smaller therapy, uh, you, you, you try to keep sodium level around 155. And the other thing you add propofol. So propofol uh, decreases uh, cerebral metabolic growth flow. Uh, this is the basic physiology. Okay, you give a one to two milligram per kilo uh, bolus 
and titrate to maximize it up to 200 mics per kg one per minute in ventilated uh, patient but it has a drawback propofol infusion syndrome if you give it more than 40 hours so there are chances of uh, propofol infusion uh, syndrome then again at this stage, patient, if the patient are, uh, patient's ICP is not responding or not coming down, then rescue decompressive surgery is a life-saving intervention. Okay. Then you think that patient is not suitable candidate for the surgery. Not suitable for the, can, uh, not suitable for uh, the surgery. Then you go to the tier three. Entirely, you, uh, you start the thiopentol infusion, and what you need to do, uh, you need to monitor the EEG as well. So, you start uh, bolus 5 to 15 milligram per kilo over 30 minutes, our 32 minutes to 2 hours, and then you titrate to see the ICP goal or burst suppression on EEG. The drawback is if you keep on giving pentobarbital, it can mimic the signs of brain death. Like patient uh, can have unreactive pupils. And uh, the other thing, if you want to withdraw the care and you want to do the brainstem testing, thiopentol uh, takes days to clear it from the body. So it's, it's, it's the drawback of thiopentol. And again, hyperventilate, uh, but again, prolonged hyperventilation for more than six hours is unlikely to be beneficial. And if you're doing hyperventilation, you need to check jugular venous oximetry, brain tissue oxygen monitoring. Why is that? Because hyperventilation can lead to uh, cerebral vasoconstriction that can uh, lead to cerebral ischemia. Uh, go for... Uh, hypothermia 32 to 34 degrees centigrade but it have uh, its own it has its own side effects in terms of shivering cardiac arrhythmia sepsis or electrolyte disturbance thank you any question thank you so much dr Khuram. very comprehensive presentation and um, very useful information you have shared with our uh, participants and hopefully a lot of questions and the discussion is awaiting for the, in your next few minutes. So participants are okay. here invited to ask questions and uh, any comments. See, Dr. Kuram, are you coming with me? Yes, yes, absolutely, sir. I'm waiting okay. for questions. Okay, Dr. Tanvir. Yes, the Dr. Tanvir. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Kurum or Dr. Amir. How are you? Yeah. One of the excellent, excellent presentation, Dr. Kurum. Thank you, sir. Uh, really admire. But I want to add something to this, that as our concept is made, that if we ICP lower ICP, then just do hyperventilate. So I want to tell you that the benefit of hyperventilation is more than the benefit of 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 the benefit कि जो हाइपरवेंटिलेशन जैसे इन कॉमन हमारा कॉन्सेप्ट बना हुआ है ना जब हम न्यूरोसर्जिकल करते हैं तो हमारे यानी जो सीनियर बता रहे होते हैं बस हाइपरवेंटिलेट आप कर दें तो दैट्स नॉट सफिशिएंट एक तो ये इस कॉन्सेप्ट जी दैट्स अ टेंपरेरी मेजर बिल्कुल बिल्कुल दूसरा जिस चीज को हम इग्नोर कर देते हैं वो टेंपरेचर है पेशेंट बिल्कुल फेब्रिल नहीं होना चाहिए CO2 प्रोडक्शन कम हो हर सेंटीग्रेड एक राइज होने से इतना ज्यादा न्यूरो न्यूरॉन का डैमेज होता है कि वो इमेजिनेशन से बाहर है तो आप नामोथर्मिया रखें या एक जो लिमिट में हाइपोथर्मिया है 
वो प्रिवेंटिव है तो इस बारे में आप काइंडली ये कर दीजिए फर्दर इसे इलेबोरेट कर दीजिए और मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है कि हमारे बहुत से सेटअप्स में इवन टर्सरी सेटअप जो न्यूरोसर्जिकल के लिए स्पेशलाइज बने हुए हैं उनमें भी जो इन्वेजिव आईसीपी मॉनिटरिंग है वो नहीं है तो ऐसी जगहों के ऊपर हम कैसे ऑप्टिमाइज कर सकते हैं आईसीपी को जी डॉक्टर सॉरी uh, मैं uh, पहला पार्ट मुझे समय लग गई है हाइपोथर्मिया का कहा है और हाइपर uh, वेंटिलेशन का कहा है जैसा कि मैंने बताया कि हाइपर वेंटिलेशन uh, जो है वो टेम्परेरी मैयर है इफ यू आर मॉनिटरिंग आईसीपी इन आईसीयू दैट्स ओनली फॉर अ टेम्परेरी लाइक अगर आपका पेशेंट का आईसीपी हो गया 22 या 25 आए यू जस्ट इन केस आई वेंटिलेशन फॉर टेम्परेरी मैयर लाइक यू नीड टू लुक एट द काज ऑफ रेज दैट इज नॉट द ट्रीटमेंट दैट इज ओनली अ टेम्परेरी मैयर So during that period, you gain a time to find out or to look at the cause of raised ICP. The other thing is uh, normothermia. Normothermia is very important, as you said, and it's entire zero uh, management. Entire zero management. This is the basic management every neurosurgical patient needs to prevent to prevent this brain herniation. So it's not in the tier one or tier two or tier three. It's the basic requirement for every neurosurgical patient. and the third thing i could not uh, get your point in 30 there was a breakage of voice the third point you were asking it's regarding the measurement of intracranial pressure uh, i mentioned in most of the even tertiary care centers like i remember in uh, nishtar hospital neurosurgical department there is no measuring of intracranial pressure so in setups where this facility is not there what else could be optimally done to achieve achieve the better outcome of the patient if Haan. the the icp measuring facility is not there ha tanveer maine bataya ke jo maine non invasive methods bataye hain unme ek to physical examination hai jo hum kar sakte hain dusra ye hai orbital ultrasound maine ye workshop karwai thi jo sark conference ho rahi thi hui hai last year usme maine ye orbital ultrasound karwai thi ke humne ये बड़ी सिंपल सी एक मेथड है आपने ग्लोब के ऊपर आंख बंद करके उसके ऊपर प्रोब रखनी है कॉमन जो भी अवेलेबल होती है हमारे पास रूटीन में प्रोब रखते हैं हमने ऑप्टिक नर्व फीड का डायमीटर कैलकुलेट कर लेना है इनिशियल रीडिंग ले लेनी है और उसको एक रेफरेंस पॉइंट बना लेना है अगर वो ऑप्टिक नर्व फीड डायमीटर इंक्रीज होता है तो उससे हमें एक आइडिया हो जाता है कि पेशेंट का आई रेज कर रहा है तो ये एक, okay. एक बड़ी हैंडी और यूजफुल तरीका है और उसके अलावा बाकी जितने भी मैथड्स हैं ट्रांसपेनियल टॉपलर टिम्पैनिंग में ब्रेन डिस्प्लेसमेंट वगैरह 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 वो हम लोग ना यूज टू हैं ना हमारे पास एक्सपर्टीज हैं ना ही हमें आती हैं वो ठीक है अच्छा ये है कि ई वी डी मैयर कर सकते हैं और करते हैं लोग जो आ, अच्छे न्यूरोसर्जिकल सेंटर तो यहाँ पे मेरे ख्याल से एल जी एट में भी हमारे इंट्रा पेरन काइमल वाली प्रोब नहीं है क्योंकि एक लाख से ऊपर की एक प्रोब है और वो एक दफ़ा निकल आए बाहर तो वो दोबारा डलेगी नहीं तो वो एक डेढ़ लाख रुपया कोई भी ज़ाया नहीं करता ये लोग क्या करते हैं ई वी डी डाल देते हैं अब हर पेशेंट में ईवीडी नहीं डल सकती बराबर जो भी है एक तो क्लिनिकल है और दूसरा ये है कि आप ऑर्बिटल अल्ट्रासाउंड कर लें आई होप दैट मेक्स क्लियर यस यस थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू एनीवन एल्स प्लीज जी एनीवन एल्स वांट टू आस्क क्वेश्चन और वांट टू कमेंट एनीथिंग अबाउट students topic yeah to dr sakib unmute your uh, assalam alaikum assalam sir kaisa alhamdulillah laka shukar hai dr khurram thank you very much for uh, excellent presentation uh, uh, thank we you have, uh, we have we have been uh, uh 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 we we have been taught uh, so many things uh, with with uh, your lecture which we were not were not knowing uh, before and uh, just i want to uh, ask one query what is the mechanism of uh, decreasing the icp by the corticosteroids when we give corticosteroids how oh, these uh, uh, decrease uh... the icp 
हाँ मैंने जो कार्टिकोस्टीरोड्स की इंडिकेशन लिखी है ना वो है कि अगर इफ इट इज एसोसिएटेड विद सस्पिशन ऑफ ब्रेन ट्यूमर और इन्फेक्शियस मनिजाइटस then uh, there would be a role of corticosteroid otherwise in brain trauma patient or uh, in other scenario uh, of raised icp there won't be any role or obstructive hydrocephalus there won't be any role of uh, corticosteroids and that just reduces the brain edema corticosteroid just reduces the brain edema secondary to brain tumor or infection yes okay, okay thank you मेरे ख्याल में अभी किसी का और का क्वेश्चन हो कोई बात करनी हो यस डॉक्टर आमिर जी डॉक्टर आमिर आप सुन सकते हैं मुझे जी जी डॉक्टर तनवीर सुन रहे हैं प्लीज गो एक्चुअली अगेन देखें इतने माशाल्लाह अच्छी प्रेजेंटेशन और रोजाना माशाल्लाह हमारा नॉलेज रिव्यू होता है मैं चाह रहा था कि इसे हम जैसे पाकिस्तान सोसाइटी ऑफ एनिस्टिजियोलॉजिस्ट है या uh, किसी यूनिवर्सिटी का इसके ऊपर पैटर्न uh, मुकर करके हम इसके सी एम आर्स के सर्टिफिकेट देना शुरू कर दें तो ये फर्दर जो है ना इसको और ब्यूटीफुल कर देगा इसमें जो अटेंडेंस है वो अच्छी हो जाएगी और इसका सर्टिफिकेट मिलेगा और दूसरा बाद में जैसे पीएमडीसी है वो अगर सी एम आर्स वगैरह इंट्रोड्यूस करती है वैलिडेशन रिवेलीडेशन वगैरह के लिए तो वो हेल्पफुल रहेगा तो अगेन मेरी ये सजेशन है कि इसे अगर इस इस इसमें अगर ये हम ऐड कर दें तो ये बहुत अच्छा रहेगा अच्छा डॉक्टर तनवीर मेरा ख्याल है लास्ट टाइम ये बात हुई थी और डॉक्टर आमिर ने इसको एलेबोरेट किया था कि ये वो ही इज वर्किंग ऑन ऑन इट आई थिंक ही इज इन टच विद सीपीएसपी आई थिंक तो लेट्स होप गुड देयर वुड बी समथिंग फॉर अस एज़ वेल एंड फॉर यू एज़ वेल <laughs> good coming actually it will it it will really benefit it ye just um, you yes. will see participation increase ho jayegi aur across the country aap dekhenge increase ho jayegi it will go to hundreds usme tanveer bhai ye abhi main cps ki karachi mein hu to usme ye jo hai na hamara session chal raha tha to usme maine apna research project bhi isi pe design kiya aur wo approve ho gaya aaj to usme hame do char cheeze badi refine ho gaye sab samne aayi कि हम हर मेड्यूल पे ये सीपीएसपी डीएमई ने हमें कहा कि अगर आप हर मेड्यूल में प्री टेस्ट और पोस्ट टेस्ट कर लें और इसका हमें आप एक डाटा कलेक्ट करके इसकी इफेक्टिवनेस को अप्रूव कर दें तो हम इसको अपने सिस्टम में इनकॉर्पोरेट कर लेते हैं और उस पर सर्टिफिकेट भी शुरू करवा सकते हैं और से, सेम वे जो है ना उधर यू के साथ भी बात हुई ये मैंने यहाँ से वापस जो है ना डायरेक्ट उधर ही जाना है यू तो इनशाला वापस से हम सी एम ई आर्स का जो यू एच एस वाला है उसको तो मैं फाइनल करके आऊंगा तो होपफुली ये सिर्फ जो है ना सी एम ई तक नहीं है ये एक बड़ा जो है एक न्यू मीडियम ऑफ टीचिंग जो है वो उसके तौर पर इंट्रोड्यूस करवाएंगे और ये लॉन्ग टर्म प्रोसेस है ये ये कोई कोविड रिलेटेड प्रोजेक्ट नहीं है कि उसकी वजह से शुरू हुआ ये उससे एक ट्रिगर हुआ है लेकिन अल्टीमेटली ये चलेगा और जो हमारे नॉलेज शेयरिंग है उसमें इसकी बहुत बड़ी कंट्रीब्यूशन है और इंशाल्लाह इससे होगी और अभी इस पे जो है नेक्स्ट है ऑनलाइन असेसमेंट का जो है एक हम इंट्रोड्यूस करवाएंगे कि जैसे ये टोक्स है हम जो अपने जगहों पे करवाते हैं तो उस पे इंशाल्लाह हम जो है ना इसको ऑनलाइन ही उस डिजाइन करेंगे और उस पे पूरे पाकिस्तान में बैठे हुए लोग जो, जो ट्रेवल करते हैं पहले वो वहीं पे पूरे पाकिस्तान में बैठे हुए हमारे जो एग्जामिनर है उनके सामने बैठ के अपना एग्जाम भी दे सकेंगे तो मल्टीपल चीजें इस पे लेके आएंगे तो इट्स जस्ट एक ग्रुप नहीं है जैसे अदर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप है तो इन चीजें ऐसा ऐसा और इम्प्रूव होंगी और आपकी कंट्रीब्यूशन भी इसमें चाहिए तो थोड़ा तो सा
थोड़ा सा इसमें हमें इनपुट देना पड़ेगा जैसे वो ग्रैंड टेस्ट की उन्होंने बात की कि प्री और पोस्ट टेस्ट तो उसमें ये था कि 50 क्वेश्चन पहले और 50 बाद में लें इस पर हमें अपने जो फैसिलिटेटर है ना उनको थोड़ा सा टूनअप करना पड़ेगा और मैंने प्लान ये किया था कि हम फैसिलिटेटर के लिए अपनी एक वर्कशॉप कर लें जिसमें इसके अंदर जो सॉफ्टवेयर यूज हो रहे हैं उनसे थोड़ी अवेयरनेस दे दें और आप इमेजिन करें कि अभी हमने यहाँ पे हमारी जो क्या कहते हैं मेडिकल एजुकेशन की फैकल्टी है उसको मैंने प्रेजेंट किया तो दुनिया में एलएमएस सिस्टम यूज हो रहे हैं लर्निंग मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम तो ये उसकी एक मॉडिफिकेशन है तो ये मॉडिफिकेशन अभी दुनिया में कहीं यूज नहीं हो रही और इसका की फीचर ये है कि इट्स अ कम्युनिटी बेस जो अदर लर्निंग मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम है वो सिर्फ रजिस्टर्ड जो आपकी क्लास है उसको अलाउ करते हैं तो ये कम्युनिटी बेस है जिसमें कोई भी बंदा सकता है तो इसके अंदर कुछ कुछ लिमिटेशन भी है कि हमारे पास डेटा स्टोरेज के लिए हम इसको यूज कर रहे हैं YouTube को और मल्टीपल सॉफ्टवेयर कर रहे हैं तो डेफिनेटली ये एक नया आइडिया है और ये बहुत आगे जाएगा इंशाल्लाह इंशाल्लाह बस इसे आ, मेरे ख्याल में इसे आ, आप डिवाइड कर लेना स्टेप बाय स्टेप तो फर्स्ट इसमें इसे आप सी पे ले आए उसके अगले स्टेप में इसे आप एजुकेशन के मॉड्यूल में ले आए अगले आप असेसमेंट के और जो वर्चुअल एग्जाम्स हैं या मॉक एग्जाम्स हैं उनमें ले आए क्योंकि ये स्टेप बाय स्टेप ही चीजें होती हैं एक वक्त में तीन स्टेप तीन चीजों को एक साथ लेके चलेंगे तो वो फिर ज्यादा एफर्ट लगेगी उसमें बिल्कुल लेर बाई लेर ही चलेंगे या थैंक यू सो मच एवरीबॉडी वो वी आर गोइंग टू ब्रेक आउट हियर एंड विल सी यू ऑन नेक्स्ट फ्राइडे विद टॉपिक वी ऑलरेडी हैव शेयर विद यू एंड गुड नाइट अल्लाह ओके अल्लाह